Praise God. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you, Zach. I really do. I want you guys to give him a hand. Because I would tell you, it takes, it takes a lot to get up here and do something like that. Amen. To look at your faces and to, to say, this is who I am or this is who I was. And, and, and I'm, I, I've, I've struggled, but I'm, I'm an overcomer. Amen. And that's what LifePoint's all about. Amen. And we tell people all the time, if you, if, if you don't like that, then you're probably in the wrong place. You need to go to a nice, cushy little church that, 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 that fluffs it all up and makes it sound good. And, and you play church games and you go when you go home and you come back on Sunday. You know, but at LifePoint, it's where lives change. It's where life can begin again. And we don't judge. This is a, you know, they say that about the, the, the homosexual society, the no judgment zone. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like that with God too. There's no judgment. You know, he, they'd like to say that uh, the church is full of judgment and condemnation and, and uh, no tolerance and all that kind of stuff, but it's just not the truth. Right. Now, there are some churches that, that will do that, and I get it. They will, yeah, yeah. And, and they do. Yeah. And uh, that's why Zach has been to eight, nine churches and trying to find a home where he can learn and grow and where people are going to love him and, 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 and keep him accountable. Right. You know, that's for all of us. That's, right. yes. that's not just for the things that he deals with. Right. It's, it's for all of us. What are you dealing with? Right. Right. What are you dealing with? Amen. All of us dealing with something. Amen. All of us, absolutely all of us are dealing with something yes. that we have to go to God for every day of our lives and say, God, fix me, help me, mold me, get me through, you know? And so it's, uh, it's so cool to know that we have a God that does not judge us and does not, uh, I don't know. He, he, there will be a judgment day, but today's not the day. Today is the day of grace. Amen. And day, today is the day where we can, we can go before God and God says, come on back, baby. Come on back. I, I, I can fix you and I can help you if you let me. Amen. So today we're going to, oh, well, I want to give you an update on the building fund. Yay? Y'all Yay. ready? Yes. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm just saying. It's rising. Uh, Mandy's been gone for a little while, and, and, and so we've uh, not been able to go forward in some other stuff that we want to get accomplished so that we can keep the vision before you. But we're going to be working on that. We're going to be working on getting a big build, a big board that has the, the building on it so that you guys can see it every Sunday and be able to keep that vision before your eyes and, and know that it is happening. It is happening. It's not, it's not just something that's gotten tucked away in a closet somewhere. And um, last week, uh, we raised uh, $4,304. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing ever? So we are at $15,254. You know, and, you know, and a lot of people would look at, the, you know, the cup half full or half empty or whatever. I always see it overflowing. <laughs> I see it overflowing. Because, you know, you can't do this unless you're seeing it by faith. You can't do this. You know, I, I, I think the biggest thing, I can deal with people who have bad attitudes. I can deal with people who are, you know, a little quirky, a little different. Um, I can deal with all kinds of people, but I cannot deal with people that don't have faith. I, just, I walk away from you. I can't listen to it. I cannot hear it. I cannot deal with negative attitudes. I can't deal with negative confessions because my whole life depends on my confession and where I'm going. Because where I'm going, I can't do it. Right. Only God can do it. Right. And you know what? If I could do it, it's not God. Right. 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 
if, if I can go into any storefront church and, and build something and make something happen, but to build what God has told us to build Amen. is going to take all of God, Amen. all of God. Amen. So just hold on, Amen. stay faithful. Um, we have some, uh, we have some, uh, a different floor plan of the building that we want you to attach to, to the building plan that you got before and, and uh, just put it together so that you can uh, believe with us Lay your hands on it and believe God that it's coming to pass and that the land that we're believing to buy is going to actually, it's going to come into our hands in not many days. Amen. 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 You know, we know with God a thousand, <laughs> you know, a thousand days, what, a thousand years as this one day. So, you know, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not going to take that long. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to hold on to our faith and believe God for what he's doing because we need a house of our own. Amen. We need our own space. We need our own facility where we can really do the things that we want to do. Amen. And that's change lives. That's right. that's right. And there's a lot of people in the Iowa City area that need changing. Amen. And we need, we need to be available. And, and uh, I can't tell you how many people, you know, that refer people to us. And I'm talking about big churches. I'm not talking about little churches, you know, or whatever. I'm talking about bigger churches that are saying, well, LifePoint will help you. That's right. Call, call LifePoint. And I'm like, why didn't they help them? Amen. You know, and I'm talking about organized, denominational churches that flowing with money, you know, will not help them. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Or if they don't live in this area, it's like, I'm not helping you. You know, and so I don't, we don't care where you come from. We don't care what state you're in, uh, what color you are, what nationality you come from. We don't even care what your sexual orientation is. We really don't. God can fix that too. <laughs> he can make that better. He can make all things better. You know, we're here to help lives and to make sure that um, people are getting better, that they're getting the truth yes. and getting better. Amen. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get started. Uh, the theme, not the theme, but the, the statement that I want you to remember that I'm going to tell you every Sunday that I'm up is there is a greater you on the inside of you. I think that's the biggest thing that people suffer with and they struggle with is that they cannot see their selves greater than what they see in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And there's a, such a greater you on the inside of you, especially as you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. And, this, and the really wonderful thing is, if you haven't even made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, there still is a greater you on the inside of you that God wants to place there and pull out of you and, and cause you to become everything God intended for you to become. And, and so if we can get beyond that sometimes, our lives would totally change. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Totally change. I'm going to go over vision point number one, but I'm going to reword it a little bit based upon the definitions that I gave you last week. So if you got a... Well, well, you don't have to write this one down, but, well, I tell them to put it up on the board. But what I want you to, I, I, you got to remember in the next few weeks, well, always, actually, bring your Bible. Mm -hmm. Bring your Bible, because I'm going to give you quite a bit of scripture, and I'm going to give you definition. Because if you're not getting understanding, it's no sense in you being here. If you're not growing, there's no sense in you sitting in these seats. You're just, you're just doing a form and a fashion of something, and it's not benefiting you whatsoever. So you got to come ready to study. you got to come ready to, 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 to let's dig. We're going to dig a little deeper. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna tear it apart and then put it back together. So now I, I tore it apart last week. Now I'm going to put it back together, okay? With vision, vision point number one is to be a place where the gospel of Jesus Christ is taught and faith is caught, and people have success in every area of their lives. Mm -hmm. 
bringing a quality of outstanding high caliber and brilliance through skill and talents and mastery that God has placed into the body. Each one of you, yeah. each one of you has this amazing brilliance on the inside of you. This amazing high caliber excellence on the inside of you that you have yet to even tap into. And it's time out for saying that I, I can't do it. It's time out to stop saying that I'm not good enough. It's just, man, I just wanna, yeah, do not something really not nice <laughs> to people who are who who think that way of themselves. I just want to pop you upside your head and and knock that thought out of your head, <laughs> and then place it in with something that God intended. Right. You know, Amen. place it place the word in the inside of you so that you can begin to see yourself. You know, and look really look in the mirror of the spirit and stop looking in the mirror of the natural. Yeah. It gets you nowhere. It, it, it gets you zero. But being a reflection or a symmetrical image of Christ to us, looking just like Jesus. Amen. Looking just like Jesus. And if you don't know how that picture looks, you need to read the Gospels. Amen. You, need to, you, need to, you need to begin to, to read and study out Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you need to study that picture, study that man, because that man, we're talking about the man, Christ Jesus. We're talking about Jesus of Nazareth that was born in a manger, not even in a hospital, not even someplace that was suitable for a baby to be born. But it was our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. You know, we got to stop and look at that picture so that we can realize that what he did was not even natural, but yet he was natural. Yeah. Okay. Faith is caught deliberately and grown. I look at Pastor Tommy when he goes out to go fishing. This man has more fishing equipment than, I, I don't know, there's probably other men that have more, but it's like, wow, I'm just always amazed. And he's always buying something. He cannot go into a Walmart or anywhere else without buying some more lures. I'm like, how many lures do you need? I mean, seriously. I mean, it's just like, wow, just, just a whole wall of, of stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. But you know, he's deliberate. He's deliberate about what he wants when he goes out to catch. And so he knows exactly what lure to use. He knows exactly what pole to use you know, how, where, where to go when he's going out there, where he knows where more fish are going to be. And so he's very deliberate. We have to be deliberate about our faith. We have to be deliberate. We have to know the picture. We have to know Christ. And when we begin to know who God is and begin to know our Savior, I'm telling you, and be really deliberate about it, faith will come. Because we begin to trust the picture. We begin to trust the God that we serve, we begin to, he becomes alive to us and he begins to grow in the inside of us and that picture becomes large. And, you, and, and, and then it comes to a point where it cannot be shaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. And nobody can move you off that, move you off your, 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 where you are because you got it. Right. You got it, but you gotta be deliberate about it. You can't, you can't fall into this. Right. Right. It, has to, it has to be caught and it has to be deliberate on how you catch it. Right. Right. Amen? So let's go to the second point in our, in, our, in our vision. And it's to move from religion to a reality of a life in Christ. To move from religion to a reality of a life in Christ. Let's talk about religion a little bit, okay? Let's go to Matthew 23. 27 and 28. I'm going to read out of the New Life version. I just found that one. I'm sure it's been around a long time, but I just found it. I'm going to read it kind of, I'm going to keep on moving because I know I could, I could go on and on. 
I'm going to say it. it's in the New Life Version. It says, it's, it is bad for you teachers of the law and proud religious law keepers, you who pretend to be someone you are not. You are like graves that have been made white and look beautiful on the outside. But inside you are full of the bones of dead men and of every sinful thing. As men look, as men look, you seem to be good and right. But inside you are full of sin. You pretend to be someone you are not. You know, it's one thing for one of us or, you know, who are in the congregation who are just, you know, trying to get it right, you know, trying to move toward the right, right uh, directions and doing the right thing. But it's different for somebody like myself or Pastor Tommy or even some of the ministers that we have part of this ministry, you know, you've made the decision to go deeper. And you've made the decision to be a teacher of the word of God. And so we're held to a higher accountability. And therefore, God looks at our life and expects more from us than he does the normal guy that comes in church on a Sunday or Wednesday or whenever we have services. You know, he expects so much more. The entire chapter of Matthew 23 talks about religious leaders and them being careful to watch their lives and be extremely careful over their words and actions. They are held to a higher standard. Religion rarely, if ever, brings life. Because most of the time, religion is based on a, 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 a rule that men have come up with that that sounds good, <laughs> but it's not necessarily good. And it does not bring life. Nothing that we have made will bring life. Only what God has made will bring life. The only thing that brings life is the Spirit of God and His Word. Such as when the Spirit of God hovered over the deep and when He brought form to the earth and brought life to our bodies. The Spirit of the Lord breathed the breath of life into our beings and made us live. Amen. And he did the same thing when we got reborn again. Amen. Amen. He breathed that breath of life again into our being as we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And he brought, he brought us alive again. The Spirit of God still does the same thing today. He, does, he doesn't stop doing it. He has to stop hovering. He has to stop hanging around us. All he's waiting for is us to make the decision to accept us, set him into our lives. He breathes life into our churches and into our lives. Most of the time, churches are dead because they have no Holy Spirit. They've either kicked him out of the house and just decided not to teach about him, or they don't let the power of God even move in their services. They don't allow him to have any uh, room to move and to go and to do what God wants to do through our lives. Right. And that's sad because that's why we stay dead yeah. and we stay inactive and we become so like, I don't know, like robots. Right. Like we just kind of, we're just kind of moving around doing our religious thing, come on, come on, come on. but it's so much more than that. Yeah. Um, Let's break down the second point of the vision to get a deeper understanding and revelation of what God wants us to know. Um, without, without understanding, like I said before, uh, we have nothing. We have just some words spoken, and that's about it. Let's, let's look at to move, to move, to move from religion to a, a reality, right? To move is to change or to cause to change from one state or opinion or sphere or activity to another, right. to move. That means it's going to require something of you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That you can't, you can't just sit there and move. Right. Right. <laughs> you got to get up and do something. Amen. Life point is moving. Yes. Yes. Even when it looks like it's not. Yes. 
It is. Because in the spirit realm, there, is, there are things going on that we don't even know what's going on. Because as we pray, the angelic forces and the, and the spiritual forces of God are moving on our behalf as we pray and believe God for the greater things that, that we're desiring for in the natural realm. And, and everything in the natural realm wants to slow us down. Everything in the natural realm wants to, to deceive us to think that nothing's going on. But that's a lie. If we know our God, which we do, we know that he is moving the moment we set our heart to pray. He is already at work. As soon as our hearts have decided that we want to, do, we want to get something accomplished and we're believing God for it, then he is already on the move and he's already doing it. But we have to stand our ground. We have to stand in faith. We have to stand in the word of God and know I'm not moving from my position, but I'm moving forward into God. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we aren't moving, we aren't changing. Right. If we aren't changing, we aren't progressing. Right. And if we aren't progressing, then we're not in alignment with the plan of God. Right. God is always moving. Hallelujah. He is not a stagnant God. Right. Something that is stagnant usually eventually smells. Because it's dying. Or the thing around it, or the things around it are dying. If a body does not move, it begins to develop atrophy. The bones and the muscles become stiff, and you begin to lose the ability to use your limbs. It is important to move and become active in your faith and, and the call of God in your life. Because guess what? If you're not active in your faith and you're not activated in the call that God has placed in your life, it is going to die. It is going to start dwindling away. The things of life, the natural things of life are going to start overwhelming you and you're going to be like, what call? I own, oh, oh yeah, God did say something about 10 years ago. You can't, you, you can't stop moving on God and just become stagnant. Or you may lose what you already have. Amen. 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 You are slowly moving away from your life source, which is God. Yes. You are slowly dying, and your vision is dying with it. Yes. Yes. Every one of us has a vision. Absolutely. Yes. I know. I, I, or you had one. Oh, yeah. Or you had one. And the sad thing about the enemy or Satan is that he will, he will slowly... Uh, begin to, to, to just cause that vision to just disappear. Yes, yes. And he begins to eat away at it and eat away at it until it totally, it, right. it's not even in existence anymore. Right, right. And that's not God's plan. Amen. Amen. Let's look at religion. Let's define religion. Religion is a particular system of faith and worship. I, I like the word system. A particular system. Come on. When did serving God become a system? When did anything about God become a system? It is not a system of things. It is a total and complete lifestyle. It is a decision that we make as people to serve a living and vibrant and active moving God and not just dealing with a system. We don't serve a religion. We serve a living God. We don't serve a system. We serve a living, active God. That's the difference. Moving from religion to a reality of a life in Christ Jesus. Let's talk about reality. Reality. What is reality? Reality is the world the world or the state of things as they actually exist as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them. The world or a state of things as they actually exist as opposed to an idealistic 
or notional idea of them. The spirit realm is the true and real reality. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. The spiritual realm is the real and true, excuse me, reality. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. Let's bring it home a little bit. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. It says, but the natural, this is the amplified version, but the natural and the non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are folly. They are meaningless nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing and understanding and becoming better or acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. People that are working in a system or a religion instead of the spirit of God cannot discern spiritual things because they are nonsense to him. That's why jumping around and shouting and and hollering to the top of your lungs, hallelujah, praise to my God, is absolutely nonsense. Why are you doing that? That's, that's a bunch of nonsense. Why are you doing that? I mean, because I'm spiritually connecting to my God. I'm not naturally connecting to him. I am spiritually connecting to him. My spirit begins to leap every time I think about the goodness of Jesus. My spirit begins to shout hallelujah because I know I'm connected to my God. And how? I don't know how people cannot sense that. Let's go to Ephesians 6 and 12. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we do not wrestle against, this is the New King James Version. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. There is a spiritual world that is of light, and there is a spiritual world that is full of darkness. And if we don't recognize the tactics of the enemy, we can be quickly deceived. And so it's important to know the difference. So the reality is truly in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. The spirit realm has been here a lot longer than the natural realm. (laughs) A lot longer, okay? What is spiritual actually made the natural? I hope hoping that's putting it in perspective for you. Then in, actual, in all actuality, the spiritual realm is more real. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. 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 The sad thing is that we've been in this natural world for so long until we can't even recognize the spiritual. Because we have, we have so clouded our lives with natural things that we, we have disconnected ourselves from the God that made us. It's so amazing how that happens and because we have an enemy in this world who is the who is the god of this world who loves to just make everything about this natural world world large and just looming over our lives and so it it blinds our eyes to the real light of the spiritual world it says We are full of his spirit. Therefore, we can connect with him. That is your true reality. Your connection to God is your true reality. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have gotten more connected to this natural world, caring more for our body or our soulish realm, spirit, soul, and body. We have allowed the soul and the body to win. 
We need a reality check big time. Because we get so concerned, just like in Matthew 6, it talks about not being concerned about what we're going to put on and what we're going to drink and what we're going to eat and what we're going to, oh, I don't know, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus, help us, help us, help us. And we spend so much time thinking about that and the natural things that we, 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 we have not connected with that spiritual side. And if we connect with the spirit, we'll see that all things are well and all things are supplied and all things are done already. All we have to do is connect and plug in and realize we need a reality check. We need to realize really what's real for us yes. and what's real in our life because what's real for us is what we'll connect to. That's right. yeah. What we think is real is what we'll connect to. Yes. Right. What, we, what, we, what we think is real is what we will gravitate to. Yes. 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 But if we think God is the real, real source, Amen. we'll gravitate to him. Amen. If we realize and understand that God is the real one that can make all things uh, do all things and he is supernatural in everything that he does we'll connect to him yes. but if we don't think that then oh we'll just get it in the suite by and by everything will work out when it's all said and done well that's what you'll have but God wants you to have so much more so much more hallelujah hallelujah Feeding on the word and building up that spirit man and giving him the strength that he needs to become the man he desires. We will be more than conquerors and win in every part of our lives. But it is that word source that keeps our faith alive, that keeps the spiritual realm moving in our life and that reality check always in check. They will not die with, 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 with the over, overwhelming uh, pressure of the natural world, but it will always rise above it and be able to take authority over those thoughts, over those things that would try to overwhelm us as we feed on the word of God. A life in Christ. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. 1 through 4. I'm going to read out of the Amplified Version. I'm starting to enjoy the Amplified Version. It just, I don't know, it takes it to another level. It is another one that takes words and divides them and, and expounds deeper into what a word says. And that's my thing. I, I, I want to get clearer and better revelation because there's more in there than what we see. There's more. Isaiah 61, starting with verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned, anointed and commissioned you. <laughs> Do you believe that? Yes. I know you believe it, Cynthia. Do you believe that? <laughs> Do you believe that for real? You better. I'm telling you, you'll struggle all of your life trying to make, make it until you realize who you are, yeah. that you are commissioned by God to do great works. You are commissioned by God to do greater things on your jobs. Just like Pastor Tommy said, your job is not there to give you money. Your job is there to make a difference. Yeah. It's to show the light of Jesus Christ. And they'll be like, what is different about you? There's something going on. Every time you come in a room, I feel a peace. Amen. Here comes Jesus. <laughs> Here comes Jesus. Amen. To bring good news to the humble and afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the wounds of the brokenhearted. That's what he called you to do. Yeah. To, pro to proclaim release, release from confinement and redemption. Oh, condemnation, excuse me, condemnation mm -hmm. to the physical and spiritual captives. Because some are both captive yeah. and bound. Yeah. And freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance and retribution of our God. Yeah. To comfort all who mourn 
to grant to those who mourn in Zion the following, to give them a turban in, uh, instead of dust mm -hmm. on their heads, a sign of mourning, the oil of joy instead of mourning, mm -hmm. the garment of, and of praise, Spirit, so they will be called the trees of righteousness, strong and magnificent, distinguished for integrity, justice, and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, mm -hmm. that he may be glorified. Amen. Everything in our life is to glorify God. Amen. Our jobs, Amen. our home, wherever we go, mm -hmm. our friends, Everything, absolutely everything in our life is to glorify God. Amen. And we got we to gotta recognize that, that, that if, if I'm, I'm cussing like a sailor, uh, whoever's in the Navy, forgive me, because they cuss in the Air Force too, I found out. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you can't represent God like that. You can't represent God always sick and defeated. Right. I'm sorry, you can't do it. People are like, ah, I'm not quite sure I want your life. <laughs> Man, uh, what kind of God do you serve? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Tell me about him, I don't think I want to know. You can't, you can't represent a God when you're always depressed. When you're always struggling because that's not God's plan for your life to be depressed. That's not God's land. I know some of us go through depression. I know some of us go through hard times, and we go through sickness and disease, and we go through all kinds of things. But what I want them to see in my life is faith. I want it coming out of my mouth like rivers of water, like, like it's going to spill out on you when you see me. Because I am going to tell you nothing but faith. You're never going to hear me say, oh, man, I'm going through. I, you know, life is rough. You're always going to hear me say, great. Amen. How you doing? I'm wonderful. Amen. Man, I got the best days ahead of me. I got the best life. I got the best everything. Guess why? Because God is in my life. He's in my body. He's in my mind. I don't struggle with nothing. I struggle with nothing. I struggle with nothing. Even when I struggle. That's right. I struggle with nothing because I get the mind of Christ, I get the word on it, and then I put the word on it. I better, or I'll keep struggling, and I decided I'm not struggling no more. Psalm 1 and 3 says, and he will be like a tree, firmly planted and fed by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, he, he prospers and comes to maturity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 of Isaiah was, Then they will, be re they will rebuild the ancient ruins, and they will raise up and restore the former desolations, and they will renew the ruined cities, the desolations, deserted settlements of many generations. I love it. You know, Satan has tried so hard to ruin the Midwest yeah. and all of the United States. Yeah. And he's, he's taking them away from the foundations of God, which this country was created and firmly established in. That's right. But God yeah. is sending us. Yeah. Yes. And I'm not talking about just life point. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That when we begin to rise up and really recognize who we are and begin to walk in the call, to dust that vision off and say, you know what? Yeah, I do remember a vision I had a long time ago. You begin to dust that thing off, bring it out the closet and say, you know what? I'm going for it because God's with me. He called us to build the ancient ruins and to restore the desolations and to renew the ruined cities and deserted settlements of many generations. Uh -huh. Many generations. The sad thing that I'm, I'm noticing is the generation that we're in right now. 
and how, my goodness, our children are being raised without a God. They're being raised not hearing about God. I know there's some, there's some, a few homes around that are, that are still teaching. Because if we're not teaching them at home, they're sure not going to hear it in school. They're surely not going to hear it in the street. They're not going to hear it anywhere else other than church and at home. And some churches aren't even teaching them that. So we better be teaching the word of God because we're going to be accountable for it. It says, will there be a generation that does not know God? We are coming really close to that time now. Satan wants us to be intimidated with the call, but God doesn't ask you to be smart. <laughs> he doesn't, thank God, hallelujah. He doesn't, he doesn't ask you to be rich. He doesn't ask you to be good looking. Hallelujah. Even greatest speech. He doesn't ask you to be no great orator. No. I mean, he took Moses. Amen. He took Aaron with him, but he took Moses. He didn't, he didn't, he, matter of fact, he told Aaron to go along with him, but he didn't tell Moses to stay home. Right. He said, you go, you go on to. I called you to. Right. 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 1 Corinthians 1, starting with verse 26, and we're going to go to 33. Just look at your own calling, believers. Not many of you were considered <laughs> wise according to the human standards. Not many powerful or influential. Not many of high and noble birth. Yes. But God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, right, right. revealing their ignorance. Yes. And God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong revealing their frailty. God has selected for his purpose the insignificant, uh -huh. <laughs> the base things of the world, and the things that are despised yes. and treated with contempt, mm -hmm. even the things that are nothing, so that he might reduce to nothing the things that are, yep. so that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. Yes. But it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah who became to us wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation and righteousness, making us acceptable to God, and sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart for God, and redemption, providing our ransom from the penalty for sin. So then, as it is written in scripture, he who boasts and glories, let him boast and glory in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? No excuses. No excuses, no excuses guys. No. You don't have any excuse. No. I mean, God did not choose you because you were smart. Because right. right. you got a bunch of degrees. Right. And you just, all that. Mm -hmm. He didn't choose you because... Because you had so much money, and what would he need you for <laughs> if you could build the temple? <laughs> because then it could be all about you. God's not going to allow that. That no man will boast in his presence. They would only be by his glory and by his permission. And so we don't have any excuses on why not to go other than our own insecurity and who we, who we think we are. Right, right. And that's why I'm here to tell you, yeah, there's a greater you on the inside of you. Yes. Come on, guys. I, I want you, for all this week, to look in the mirror. This is your homework. Yep. Okay. This is your homework. You look in the mirror every day. Uh -huh. Every day. And tell yourself, I have a greater me on the inside of me. Oh, yeah. Amen. Look in the mirror mm -hmm. and say, I have a greater me on the inside of me. Say it after me. I have a greater me 
on the inside of me. I have a greater me on the inside of me. And I'm going to let him out. Amen? God has, has, it waiting for us, has been waiting for us to choose life. It's our choice, and today is the day. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Today is the day. Amen. No more wasting time. No more backing up. No more excuses. I'm going. Amen. Just like Fred, I'm going. I'm going. Amen. Nobody can't tell me I can't go. Because I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can do it. Yeah. Only you can stop you. Yeah. Say, don't stop, right. stop blaming the devil. Right. Only you can stop you. Right. By not studying, not staying in the word, right. not doing what God has called you to do, and not, uh, applying yourself and digging, digging with diligence for the presence of God. Amen. It's up to you. And guess what? It's going to be exactly what you thought. Amen? Amen? Amen. Stand on your feet, guys.